Sit back and throw one back with your pinky in the air and a middle finger to the world. And join me, the eclectic gentleman, Stephen Watts, as we look back on this day in pro wrestling history. But before we do, put that drink down, like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get our wrestling history on. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is December 13th. And we're going to start off as we always do on a positive note. That's right, these are your pro wrestling birthdays. 1910, one of the greatest promoters of all time, Leroy McGurk. 1952, JYD, the Junkyard Dog. 1953, the luchador known as Ferreza Guerrera. 1959, that Russian, that evil, evil Russian, Boris Zukov. And last but not least, 1986, Canada's own, Michael Elgin. And we're going to keep that positivity train a-rolling. That's right, these are your pro wrestling history highlights for December 13th. Jumping in the Wayback Machine and going all the way to 1883, where we see H.M. Duffer defeat John McMahon in Boston, Massachusetts for the American Collar and Elbow title, beginning his third reign. Leap into 1920, where we see Ed Strangler Lewis defeat Joe Stetcher to win the New York version of the World Heavyweight title. A 20-year leap to 1940 sees Buddy Knox defeat the Great Mestifo to win the Midwest Wrestling Association Light Heavyweight title in Akron, Ohio. Making a quick pit stop in the 50s, 1952. Frank Stojak defeats Roger McKay for the Pacific Coast Junior Heavyweight title in Rosenberg, Oregon, beginning his fifth reign. Grooving in 1960, Lee Fields defeats Pancho Villa for the NWA Gulf Coast Heavyweight title in Pensacola, Florida, starting his third reign. That next year in 1961, in Honolulu, Hawaii, the masked executioner defeats Lord James Blears for the NWA Hawaii Heavyweight title. A two-year jump this time to 1963, Enrique Torres defeats Rock Hunter for the Central States version of the NWA United States heavyweight title in St. Joseph, Missouri. Grooving to 1966, the Infernos, Frankie Kane and Rocky Smith, defeat Jose Lothario and Sam Steamboat to win the Florida version of the NWA World Tag Team titles for a third time in Tampa, Florida. Two years later in 1968, Dusty Rhodes defeats Tommy Martin for the NWA Central States Heavyweight title in St. Joseph, Missouri. Our final stop in the groovy 60s, 1969. Tony Bourne and Moondog Maine defeat Beauregard and Roger Kirby for the NWA Pacific Northwest Tag Team titles, beginning their eighth reign. Grabbing my bell bottoms and disco ducking it to 1971. Antonio Inoki is fired from the Japan Wrestling Association because of an apparent plan to take over the promotion. Inoki's NWA United National Heavyweight title was vacated as a result. The following year, Inoki would found New Japan Pro Wrestling. Giant Baba would also leave and form All Japan Pro Wrestling the same year, and JWA closed in 1973. That next year, in 1972, Bob Kelly defeats the Spoiler to win his fourth City of Mobile heavyweight title in Mobile, Alabama. That next year, in 1973, Duke Miller defeats Ken Lucas for the NWA Mississippi heavyweight title in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, ending Lucas's fourth reign. A two-year jump to 1975 sees Duke Miller defeat Ken Lucas again to win the NWA Alabama heavyweight title in New Brockton, Alabama. This ended Lucas's sixth reign and began Miller's third. Our final stop in the disco ducking 70s, 1976. Don Leo Jonathan defeats John Quinn for the Vancouver version of the NWA Pacific Coast heavyweight title in Vancouver, British Columbia, beginning his fifth reign. Grabbing my boombox and going to the 80s, 1981. Pero Aguayo defeats Chris Adams to win the WWF light heavyweight title in Mexico City, Mexico. That next year in 1982, Mark Romero, later known as Mark Youngblood, defeats Hercules Hernandez for the NWA Central States television title in Kansas City, Kansas, beginning Romero's second reign. 
a four-year jump to 1986. The Rock and Roll RPMs Mike Davis and Tommy Lane defeat Jeff Jarrett and Billy Travis to win the AWA Southern Tag Team titles in Memphis, Tennessee. At the same event, Bad Company Paul Diamond and Pat Tanaka end the third CWA International Tag Team title reign of Akira Soto and Tarzan Gato. Staying in 1986, Rip Oliver defeats the Assassin in Portland, Oregon for the NWA Pacific Northwest heavyweight title, beginning his 10th reign. Moving to 1988, the AWA held their one and only pay-per-view event, Super Clash 3, in conjunction with World Class Championship Wrestling and Memphis CWA. The event, held in Chicago, Illinois at the UIC Pavilion, drawing less than 2,000 fans for a 12-match card. The main event sees AWA World Champion Jerry Lawler defeat World Class Champion Kerry Von Erich to unify the titles. Lawler was later given a third belt by the USWA, proclaiming him the unified world champion. Staying in 1988, Stan Hansen and Terry Gordy defeat Tenru and Kawada in the finals of All Japan's Real World Tag League to win the vacant All Japan World Tag Team titles. That next year in 1989, the Colossal Connection, Andre the Giant and Haku, defeat Demolition, Axe and Smash for the WWF Tag Team titles in Huntsville, Alabama, ending Demolition's second reign. This would be Andre's last championship reign in wrestling. Staying in 1989, the NWA held the 7th annual Starcade at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. In a surprising move, the decision was made to throw out the usual supercard format and instead go with a pair of round-robin tournaments, calling the show Future Shock Night of the Iron Men. All the matches had a 15-minute time limit draw with no titles on the line. The tag team tournament is won by the Road Warriors, while the singles was won by Sting. Grabbing my flannel and going to the decade of grunge, 1993. Alunder Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa, defeats Heidi Lee Morgan in the finals of a tournament to win the revived WWF Women's World title. And last but not least, 1998. Rob Van Dam and Sabu defeat the Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray and Devon, to win the ECW Tag Team titles in Tokyo, Japan, ending the Dudleys' fifth reign. Those were your short, but sweet, pro wrestling history highlights for December 13th. I'm the eclectic gentleman, Stefan Watts, and we'll see you tomorrow.